Hello everyone, my name's Stuart Wyeth, welcome home. So we're outside our first commercial to residential development where we bought a, a dilapidated or a defunct um, commercial property and we're now turning it into um, nine one bedroom flats. We originally bought it with the intention of keeping the shop at the front but there's this new thing called permitted development class MA which allows us to convert the whole shop into one bed residential dwellings. So the aim is to take the front facade off to put a new nice new um, entrance in the front put two new windows down here which will create the, the front bedroom flat and then we're going to put a new bin store on this side which will be enough to, to house sort of a multiple amount of uh, refuse bins and recycling bins glass storage bins for the whole building the street as you can see this area uh, we're in a home county of, of Farnborough and it's about half an hour commute from London um, they are currently putting in a new cycleway that takes you from one train station which is a four minute cycleway down to Farnborough Main which is about an eight minute cycle uh, and that's around half an hour into London. There's also Farnborough um, Exhibition Centre and Farnborough Air Show, which is down the road. So it's quite a nice area uh, and it's, it's so close to London. So it's got good, good yields. So I'll take you through the building and show you how we're gonna carve the space up. Um, show you all the floors, there's two stories on this building. Um, but first, what we wanted to do is make the building look as attractive as possible. I'll show you a photo of um, the building originally. It used to have a, a little flat top on, but we found a photo from 1909 which showed it had a little triangle on the top of this front section. So we wanted to speak to the planners and see if we could um, bring that back into play just to make the building look a bit more attractive. So um, we found some photos of the building back from 1909 and we found a photo of 1960 and uh, over Christmas we spent the time building the puzzles which we want to put on the communal spaces and the idea is to sort of bring a bit of the heritage back of the building so our future tenants will sort of look after the building and uh, yeah just uh, respect it as much as possible really. So this was the building we bought uh, in October um, of last year, 2021. Um, it was originally a boots building where it's got these two stories up and all this was being used for office space. It was all redundant space. And we bought the building for um, £400,000, which works out to be about 400 square metres. And we paid uh, about £1,000 a square metre. Knowing the area really well, um, we know that we can sell um, or re refinance these flats for around £4,000 a square metre. So there's a 3,000 uplift in the property. So we think there's about, well, we know there's about 1,500 pounds a square meter profit, which means we should aim to make around 600,000 pounds on this project in around about a nine month period. So you can see here, the building had this sort of um, uh, flat top, which has been rebuilt recently. And we think it's because they, um, it may have fell down in a storm or it wasn't sort of structurally sound. So they took it off and we wanted to firstly make this look a bit more appealing. So we, um, Bought the photos, made it into a puzzle, and our aim is to sort of put them up in the communal areas so you've uh, got a bit of the heritage. So when people do start renting it, they realise that this is a, an old building and we want them to sort of respect it as much as possible. And this was the building in 1909, as you can see, it had this little triangle on the top. So we met the planning officer outside. We said that we want to sort of reinstate this and just put a little stone in there of our company name, which he absolutely loved the idea of. But rather than having no structure around the back, we said we'd rebuild the roof, bring this into the structure. And we also took the opportunity to put solar panels on the roof. And we also put hot water heat pumps everywhere so we're actually going to run the flats as efficient as possible um, I'll show you upstairs and how we're going to actually insulate each flat to try and bring them up to around a B rating okay so this is what will become the flat entrance so we're going to have a nice oversized door with a nice fixed panel and then we're going to have some external um, uh, letter boxes there for for the postman the idea is that we're going to come through here this will become the communal space with those bits of art. We've got four of them that we're making in puzzles, so we're gonna have sort of light, little lighting display on them all that are all built into the wall. We've cut this door out. When we bought the property, we didn't realize this was a, a bit of space we, uh, we actually owned because the, uh, the boundary line runs through here, but this was all bricked up, so we wanted to expose it. And now we've decided to cut this in half this half will become a bike store for all the flats to use and then the other half will become a bit of a kitchen courtyard area for one of the flats uh, and just to get better light into the kitchen area. So in this area we're going to put a, a lobby door which is going to enter into two, three flats. One flat is to, to the rear here, the other flat is over here and the other flat is now going to be in the front area of the, the shop. So we're currently standing in one of the flats which will have a kitchen area, a little shower, a toilet basin and then the natural light will be used for one for the living room and the other window will be for the bedroom. The far area over this side will be where the bin store's going. So this will be carved off here, which will have a nice deep bin store for recycling and refuge. And then we're gonna have our services covered at the back of the bin store, which will be accessible through the bin store um, towards the rear. So we'll have an entrance door here into this flat. This is basically split in half. This becomes an open plan sort of kitchen living area. These will become French doors, which we're going to make like a little green living wall, just for like, like a sort of French feel, like a little uh, 
little cafe type thing with a little coffee table, some French doors, and this will become the open plan kitchen. We'll have a door here, which will become into the bedroom. Um, the bedroom comes to around here. It's about 3.1 meters squared by three, 3.1 meters. And then the rest of the space, which is behind here, at the moment we're rebuilding the back wall because we wanted so many windows and doors, it just made sense for us to knock the whole wall down and then rebuild it. So this becomes their sort of living area. The building itself, because it's quite an industrial looking building, we really want to try and incorporate some of these stills. I mean, they're so, I mean, all these wrought iron plugs and, and so on are so nice to look at. We're hoping if the building inspector allows us, it's because this bit's a single story skin that we can actually fire paint these and then repaint them black and make them a bit of a feature inside the flats uh, that alongside the sort of finishes and fixings we've gone for like a black um, uh, industrial black feel to the switches the power points all the um, the, the window um, details so um, yeah it just gives it a bit more character this will become the garden so these ground floor flats the two at the rear have their own gardens we'll have a set of French doors out into a little little lobby area there'll be a window into the living room and this becomes a little courtyard which we aim to sort of slab or put some decking down and then put some fencing up or some, um, some bamboo just to make it look quite nice. Okay, so um, to the rear, because we're making so many alterations, it was just easier, to, easier for us just to knock the whole wall down because it's an old nine inch wall. This way we can bring it up to modern regulations. We can put the windows and doors in at the right sizes that's gonna suit the building. Um, and at the back, you've got two, a window and a door for one flat. You've got a bigger set of French doors and then two more windows for this flat. Um, and then on the top, we've got two more windows, which are gonna be for each flat bedroom window at the top. And then at the back of the property, we're gonna render the whole thing um, in a Weber one coat, which is basically a maintenance free render. It doesn't need to be decorated and that'll just finish the back off, make it look nice and modern. And then we'll do the two side wings as well, um, just to finish off the rear. You're standing in at the moment the, uh, the lounge. So this will be French doors with side panels. And there'll be a wall here, which will come through and this will become the other bedroom. A bit hard to envisage at the moment, but when it's all done, it's gonna, uh, gonna look fantastic. So I come through here. In this area, of course here, will become the bedroom. There'll be a shower room a kitchen and then the door, the entrance door. And that one's around 50 square meters. So really good size, one bedroom flat. And then to the rear of the building, the front flat will have off the lobby. The lobby's there is a fire protection. So the stairwell is the number one protection we need, to, we need to create. So each of the flats have got internal lobbies. This one will have an external lobby, which will lead into these three doors. And then the other door will be here into what will become the kitchen area, the shower room, and then the bin store will be disconnected and then we'll have the living room and the, and the bar from here. So buying commercial buildings is a fantastic way of, of getting value for money in a building. If you look at the size of this, it's, it's 4,350 square foot. It's like basically buying six semi-detached houses in a home county of London for £400,000, which is a ridiculously cheap amount. And when you buy a commercial building, they've often done a lot of the structural work. A, you're buying it because it's already built. The foundations are done, the brickwork's been here for 100 years. And you can see by all the stills and all the picture frame beams that have been put in, being in construction for 17 years, there's probably a 250, 300,000 pounds worth of cost just in the construction to make this open plan. Um, so it's a fantastic building and uh, we can't wait to see it finished. So this is the first floor. So we're gonna divide this area into another little fire lobby, which will go into two more flats. We've got two more flats. We've got four flats on this first floor. This becomes the fire lobby where we'll have a door here into one flat. Now, when we bought the property, we done all our numbers based on seven one bedroom flats. And when we done a really detailed survey and we'll show you the plans of how detailed they are, we really found out that we could get two flats in this space by being really creative, um, which obviously really helps with the GDVs. So we're gonna divide this in two. This is gonna become the kitchen area. We've got the pictures in each room so the electricians and plumbers know exactly where things are going. But there's gonna be a kitchen here with a window over the, over the sink. We're gonna have a floor to ceiling window in the living room area. We're gonna have another floor to ceiling window in the hallway, which will lead us to the master bedroom. And we're gonna have a bar from here with its own natural light in the, in the flat roof. This is all to be done still. So next week, we're hoping to get all the old lanterns taken away. We'll then do a brand new re-roof and up the new flat roof, um, put a new vapor barrier in, new insulation. And like I said, the idea is to try and bring this up to a B rating. So we really are over, over um, insulating as much as possible. So there's gonna be a shower room here. We'll be walking through into what will become a nice big bedroom. Again, they're around 3.1, 3.2 meters squared, and it'll have its own window to the rear. On this side will be another bedroom here, another bathroom, oh, shower room here, and then this will become the living room. We're gonna go for a nice feature window here because we're looking at 
you know, not a particularly attractive brick wall, we're going to make this all sandblasted, make it floor to ceiling, and then put a nice big window above, which will then give the natural light in, which will be clear, and they can use that for ventilation. And then you can see the kitchen is here, all laid out along this wall right the way up to the edge of the wall and then we're going to put another Velux window in here so it'll be a nice bright space. So in this flat we've got a fridge freezer here, we've got a dishwasher, some high level units, a little corn unit um, for pots and pans and then we've got um, a washing machine here. So as we go through the building we've actually, we're more and more complete as we go towards the top. The idea of these developments is to start from the top and work down through the building. This is our third flat. So we've incorporated a few little touches in the flats. For instance, all of them are gonna have um, intercon systems with color screens, so more people ordering Amazons, pizzas, whatever. So the idea is you can sort of see who's at the door, let them in, and uh, all the trades can come up. So as you come through, everything as you can see has all been framed out. Um, we've got everything, electrics, plumbing's all been completed. If you look to the left, you'll see that we've put heat pumps everywhere. Um, so a hot water heat pump is a really efficient way of running these little micro flats. Um, if rather than having gas everywhere, which is obviously going up by, by, the, by the day at the moment, expense, the energy costs are so, so expensive, um, we decided to put these little electric heat pumps in. All we need to do is simply run extractions from the outside into the building and then run um, cold air out of the building. And what it does is it basically takes the, the temperature from the air it extracts the, the heat from that, that, that air and it pumps out cold air. And what that does is it very slowly heats the hot water. It takes around 24 hours to heat the hot water, but it will maintain it at a constant temperature. So basically, whether it's winter or summer, people need hot water every day to shower. So the efficiency is, um, is making sure that they can use the hot water all year. And then in the actual flats, because they will stacked, the heat from the flat below will heat the one above, will heat the one above. So we're just putting small electric radiators everywhere just to take the chill off in the coldest days. So to the left here, we've got the master bedroom. So as we come through, we've got window to the back, nice big original sash windows which we've taken out. We've now replaced with UPVC windows and you'll see that on the front and rear, which will give it a nice view. Nice big storage cupboards um, for, for hanging and for, for storage. Um, as you come through, this becomes the landing. This is the shower room, which will have a shower, a toilet basin and a towel round. And then as you come through, there's the kitchen and the living room in this space. So the kitchen, this one has been into the design. So we've gone from here across here, um, a full height fridge freezer. We've got small dishwashers in all of them. They are single one person flats, um, but it's just a nice amenity to have if you're gonna rent somewhere. And then we've got the TV, BT area in here. And all the designs we've come up with is for people to, because they're gonna furnish them themselves, whether they want a dining room table and a smaller sofa, or whether they want to go for a really big sort of L-shaped sofa. Each flat's been designed to sort of incorporate both those options. So this is the shower room for, for each of the flats, are similar in size. Because we've gone for 39, 40 square metre flats, we decided to put showers in rather than baths and showers. Um, <clears throat> because we're gonna refinance these flats, and, uh, and maintain them long term. We're just trying to think of everything we can do to make them, make them as maintenance free as possible. So in all the showers, rather than tiling the showers, we found a, a panel board, a shower panel, which is quite expensive, but it's completely water resistant, or waterproof. Uh, effectively, you can drop it in water for 100 years and it won't make any damage. So the idea is that each of the shower, um, shower areas, enclosures, are going to be used with this flat, uh, this panel board which then just needs to be siliconed every few years and we found a tile that matches the same as the panel so the idea will be that it's like a white and black marble floor which will feel like tiles on your feet and the panels will look like shower tiles and then we'll just put a little bit above the basin uh, effectively making it as maintenance free moving forward over the years while we uh, rent them out and um, this is our fourth flat on the first floor so with fire regulations because we want this really nice open light stairwell to be quite attractive and um, we didn't want to be putting in lobby doors in and out of each space because it just would have ruined the feel of what we're trying to achieve so speaking with the building inspectors and working closely with them we've now designed each flat to have their own internal lobby so the main door into the flat becomes the fire door the first point of uh, fire protection and then where the kitchens are is a second fire door so what we've done is created these little internal fire lobbies which then allow us to protect the stairwell inside the flats rather than having doors outside the flats which then can make it a bit congested and make it a bit cluttered. Um, so we're going to have a fire door into the living kitchen room and in this one we've used this space, we've studied and framed everything out so it is the depth of the kitchen, again to make it feel wider. Kitchen through here to about here where the chop saw is, that'll become the kitchen, full height fridge freezer, hob, extraction and then the sinks over here. And then this space is enough for someone to put a dining room table in or to have a nice big TV on the wall. And again, the design of the sofa is to use that back wall to make it as big as they, they want to, to sort of live, with, live in. So this is the, the master bedroom. Well, the only bedroom, they're one bedroom flats, but we're gonna have a, a nice size, um, five foot, six foot double bed 
on this wall. Um, we've got space for TV and power over here. And each flat we've designed is to have a nice big double wardrobe, so hanging space in here. And then we've got shelves um, and single storage in one, so all the storage is part of the, 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 the rental cost. So this is up to our second, second floor, where there's two more flats. So in this flat, we've gone for, yeah, full height. Uh, no, we haven't, sorry. We've gone for low level in here because of the, the slope of the roof. So we've gone for an independent fridge, independent freezer. Then we've gone for a hob oven, and then we've got a dishwasher, a corner unit with a drawer. Then we've got the sink, and then we've got another uh, washing machine. So the whole thing is built low level. We've gone for a double cupboard at the top here for plates and glasses, and then an extractor fan here, and then obviously that incorporates the slope. But because there's a little bit less storage cupboard space, we've sort of used this and put an LED strip in it. So we're going to sort of embed it into the kitchen design just to sort of bring it up to a, make it a bit more premium. And then in here we've got, TV, internet, and then again the same design with the sofa. Power points either side of the sofa, nice big L shape or sort of a double seater or triple seater with a sort of coffee table, dining room table in there. Heating system, that's all built in, that one's actually finished, um, it's ready to be plumbed in. And you can see here you've got the, um, all the ducts connected now. Um, we're gonna de we decided to take this, we were going to make this the entrance into the bedroom, but we wanted to have a slightly bigger feel uh, in the hallway, so by opening this up we're going to do like a sort of hanging coats and some low storage just to make this feel a bit bigger, into then what is the bedroom, where we're going to have double wardrobes in here, another single wardrobe in here, and the bed along this wall. So this is our last flat upstairs on the second floor. This becomes the master bedroom. Um, a bit of a unique shape, so we've decided to have the bed coming off this wall, and on the far end above the Velux window, we've gone for like a dressing table, study area, and uh, on the rear you've got, yeah, Velux and a nice big new PVC window for all that natural light. Uh, and that's gonna be overlooking the, the solar panels at the back of the property. We think we've got about 12 or 13 solar panels on the main roof, and then the rest are gonna be on that flat roof at the back. This is the other hot water heat pump, which has been finished. You can see all the ducting and stuff's all been connected now. So that's all ready to be pressure tested and uh, ready to use. This becomes the shower, shower toilet basin. We spec the same layout, so we try to use the same space, almost mirror image in the floor below, just because it makes sense. The only thing with this kitchen, we've designed it differently because the one thing that we didn't know until we had it built at this stage was how deep this projection was gonna be. Um, and now we've built it, we can work out that we can just about fit the kitchen to run along this wall here, which gives us a much bigger living room area. Um, we could have put the sofa along this wall, but that actually restricts people having the so size of sofa they want. So by putting the TV and the uh, BT and all the internet on this wall, it means that we can use the far corner for a nice big L-shaped sofa, so that, again, they, they haven't got any restrictions. Little electric radiator under the slope, and then this wall here, as you can see, it's gonna look like this. So full height fridge freezer, then a low unit right the way through with a dishwasher and washing machine, and then full height cupboards right across the top here. So it sort of breaks the kitchen area up from the living space. So that closes our tour off of the, the, the build site during construction. Look forward to showing you around once it's finished and uh, show you the, the colours, the flooring and uh, the carpet and um, yeah, see what you think. <laughs>